Hi, my name is Elizabeth. I'm a librarian with the Cosby Library and Community Commons. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to use the shrink film or shrink plastic that was included in the Adult Craft to Go kit for September and October. Now, of course, we intended the craft kit to be used for adults, but this video is available to anyone. So if you are a young person watching this video and you want to make shrink crafts, please be sure to have an adult help you because you will be using either the oven or a toaster oven to finish your crafts. And if you're going to be fusing, that is even a little bit more dangerous than the regular shrink crafts. So I will be showing how to make both the one-stage shrink craft uh, items and then also some fused items. So these two items that you see here, these are fused items. Included in your kit will be two sheets of the shrink film that looks like this. And you'll also get two pin backs and a keychain. So you can use your keychain like this, and all you need to do to use your keychain, I'll go ahead and show this. I tried to make it as simple as I possibly could so that you didn't have to use jump rings or pliers. Uh, you're welcome, of course, to go out and buy your own accessories and fittings if you don't want to use this type of keychain. Uh, but all you'll need to do is pinch that little loop, stick it through the hole in your uh, piece, and then loop the string over and you've got your keychain. So that's how I intended for that to be used. The pin back, I will be making a pin in this video as my demonstration, but just real quickly, the pin back, all you'll need to do is sand the pin itself a little bit and then sand the back of the object that you're going to turn into a pin and then you'll use super glue or some other kind of adhesive to put that pin back on. So that's how you'll use your two little optional accessories. Of course, you don't have to make something that needs those. You could simply make something like this. So I intended for this to be a bookmark. It's a little bit thick to be used as a bookmark, um, but it is really pretty. Um, so you can make just something like that. I made here an ornament, a fused ornament. So let me show you this. So this is actually two pieces. Um, that are heated at a higher temperature and fused together. Uh, the film that we provided is transparent, so your design will show on both sides. So here we have the winter scene before it starts to snow, and here we have the winter scene while it's snowing. And then I just used a little bit of twine to turn this into a hanging ornament. Here's another fused piece I used uh, some string to turn this into a necklace. It's a little bit more transparent. So I did all of these using the same shrink plastic or shrink film provided in your kit. And this was the very first piece I made as sort of a test. So let me tell you about some of the other things that you will need in order to complete your crafts. So one thing you will need, of course, is an idea of what you want to make. And so we do have a book at the library called Shrink, Shrink, Shrunk, Making Stylish, Stylish Shrink Plastic Jewelry. It's almost a tongue twister. Of course, I have this book checked out right now in order to make this video, but I will be returning it soon so that you can put this video, this item on hold. And the nice thing about this book is that not only does it give instructions, for specific crafts, but it also includes templates in the back. And you can see that I made this craft from this book. So while I have this open, I want to show you uh, why this is called shrink film. It will shrink quite dramatically. So here, this piece right here, is the back of this necklace. And you can see that it shrank to a little bit less than half of its original size. So remember, when you're making your uh, items, they will shrink dramatically. That's the whole idea behind this uh, material, is that it shrinks and it concentrates either the colored pencil or the marker that you're going to be using to make the design. But if you're interested in some ideas, some inspiration, this is a nice book to check out. There's also many, many ideas on the internet, on YouTube, 
um, you can go out and just find clip art that you like and trace it onto your plastic. That's actually what I did and I'll be showing you uh, how to use ideas uh, just from clip art or from images that you get off the internet to make your jewelry. So some other things that you will need. As I mentioned, you will need something to color your shrink film with. So I happen to have Prismacolors at the house. This is a, a somewhat high-end colored pencil. So the lead is very soft. The pigment is very vibrant. These are somewhat expensive, so you don't necessarily have to go out and get Prismacolors, but if you just really want to go all out or if you happen to have these at home, uh, they are great for making this kind of jewelry. If you don't have any colored pencils at home, I would just encourage you not to go out and buy the cheapest ones that you can possibly find. So don't go out and get the dollar store colored pencils. Uh, do get some, some reasonably good quality uh, colored pencils if you're going to use colored pencils. You can also use permanent markers. Uh, in order to color your your shrink film and that will work as well. Do not use washable markers, they will not work. You might also want a pencil and a ruler. You may want scissors. You'll definitely need at least plain scissors. You may also want some decorative scissors. These actually can be used to cut out designs. You may need a hole punch if you're going to be making something that has a hole in it. So you'll use a hole punch to make a hole in the plastic. And finally, you will need some sandpaper. So I used 220 grit sandpaper. You can actually go maybe even one step higher than this. I would not go any lower than 220 grit sandpaper because the scratches will start to become very visible uh, on your design. And then finally, you want something to seal your piece with. So you can either use Mod Podge, the same stuff that you used for your decoupage clipboard. Uh, it's very widely available at crafting stores or even at places like Walmart that have a crafting section. You can also get a spray acrylic sealant. Make sure that it says that it bonds to plastic. The one thing that I discovered when using the spray uh, sealant is that you have to be very careful and put on a very light coating at first because if you put on a very heavy coating, it will make your markers run. So I actually had a piece before this that was very similar to this and I had to toss it because when I put on my sealant, I put on way too much and all my colors ran and it sort of ruined my design. So do be careful of that. You can leave your pieces unsealed. And on certain occasions, you don't need to seal an item. So in this case, I put the colored pencil and the marker uh, between these two layers of plastic. So this one didn't have to be sealed at all. But most of the time, if your design is exposed, if the colored pencil or the marker ends up exposed, you will want to seal it because it will wear off after a while. So let's talk about making your design. When you apply color to the plastic, you will first need to prep your surface. So I provided you with what was supposed to be pre-sanded shrink film. And it is a little bit sanded, but I found that when I actually tried to use it, um, that I needed to sand it quite a bit more. So when you look at this in the light, you can see that there's a kind of shiny side and there's a very shiny side. You will not be doing anything to the very shiny side. Uh, you'll be doing all your coloring uh, on this somewhat duller side, but what you really need is you really need it for, for it to not be shiny at all. So you can see that I've already prepped these two surfaces, and I would go ahead, unless you're planning on using a piece uh, totally uncolored, you're planning on using a piece maybe as a backing for another piece like this, I would go ahead and just sand the whole surface of your film. And all you need to do to do that is just go in circles gently with your sandpaper and then wash off the, the dust that will be generated from that process until it's very evenly sanded and you don't see any reflection anymore. So I apologize that you'll have to do that extra step. I, I didn't intend for you to have to sand this paper, but unfortunately sometimes we get things that are not quite uh, to our specifications when you when you order things online. By the way, this shrink film is very cheap. If you want to order more of it or order different colors, there's shrink film that you can get 
that is white when you shrink it. There's shrink film that you can put through a printer and print designs onto it. So in that book there are lots of printable designs that you can print directly onto the film and then just cut it out. You don't need to do any drawing at all. You can sometimes find this material at uh, stores like Michael's or Joann's or Hobby Lobby, but it's, it's really easy just to order it online if you want more. You'll also want to keep your piece of sandpaper around to act as an eraser. So if you can see right here, I've got a little mark from where I measured my plastic. And if you mess up your design and you decide that you want to start over, you can just very gently sand and that mark will get lighter and lighter and lighter and then eventually it will be gone. You want to make sure that you get rid of every shadow of that mark because as you can see here I have a tiny little bit of orange here at the edge and I thought that that was not going to be visible but once I baked this item in the oven the colors concentrated to the point where I could see that little tiny uh, spot of orange again there at the edge that's kind of outside um, that dash. So do be careful when you're erasing that you erase even the shadow of that mark that was there. So now what I'm going to do is again I'm going to make a fused piece so if you do not want to make a fused piece, if you just want to make a single layer piece like this, or maybe you want to make a double layer piece like this and just simply glue the layers together. So here, I just glued two separate pieces together, again by using my sandpaper on the back of this layer and then applying the glue uh, and sticking them together with super glue. So there is no fusing involved here if you don't want to fuse. So if you just want to do uh, that, then you'll stop after the first bake. If you want to go on and make a fused piece, I'll be showing you how to do that. That involves a second baking at a higher temperature. So again, I'm going to make a fused piece, and my piece is going to be a dragonfly pin. So my idea is that I will draw the dragonfly on this piece, and then I will have a backing piece like this and that will be my pin. Now I have to be very careful here because uh, my plastic is transparent and it will end up transparent even after I bake it and you can see here that you can see a little bit the pin through here so if I want to make sure that the pin is not that visible through my piece I need to make sure that I put on a pretty heavy coating of either colored pencil or marker. And you can use colored pencil and marker in the same piece. So in this one I used marker to draw the cat and then and the swirls and the hearts down at the bottom and also the border and then I used colored pencils for the background. So you can make a pretty solid looking piece just by using colored pencils but that's a pretty heavy application. And then here where I wanted it to still be somewhat translucent that's a very light application of the colored pencils. You may actually want to experiment with some scrap pieces, not only because it's kind of tricky to get the color application just right, but it's also um, nice to know how the plastic is going to behave in your particular oven. Um, this piece and this piece in particular are rather large, and this piece too, um, and so in the oven they will move quite a bit as they're cooking. I'm going to try to show you what happens in the oven and I will uh, give you some tips on how to avoid a piece uh, curling and sticking to itself. One of the ways that you can avoid that, at least in the beginning, is not to make anything that has lots of little sticking out bits. So some people like to do handprints of their children, let's say. So if you're doing a handprint of your child and you've done the outline, what you want to do is you want to cut cut around like this and make that your piece that you're going to shrink. Don't cut out each individual finger because in the oven that's going to shrink right up and it's going to stick to itself. And while someone who is pretty advanced at this craft can prevent that, um, you as a beginner might find it kind of frustrating to deal with. I will tell you how you can try to prevent that so if you really want to make a craft 
with with small pieces sticking out you can try it but just to warn you that ones that are like this that are just just big pieces with with not a whole lot of little details sticking out they're much easier to deal with so I'm going to use either a pencil to trace my design first and then go over it with marker or a lot of times I'll just start with marker uh, or colored pencil. In this case I'm going to use a marker to draw my dragonfly design and then I'm going to use colored pencils to make a background piece. I'm also going to use these decorative scissors to make a border around this back piece. Let me show you a little trick about using scissors. So here I have uh, a scrap piece where I tested these scissors. So as you can see they work pretty well. Now the trick with scissors is you don't ever want to use the tip of your scissors to cut anything. So if I were to use the tip of these scissors to cut, watch what happens. I'm going to actually zoom in here because I want you to see and I don't want you to ruin your piece. Can you see what just happened there? I just cracked my shrink film. Do not use the tip of your scissors to cut anything. Always use the back of your scissors. Now let's say that I have a shape like a flower that I'm going to cut out. So I'm just going to sketch really quick. So let's say that's my shape that I'm going to cut out. How am I going to cut that out? Well, an easy way to cut something like that out is to first cut like this. So this is called rough cutting. Okay. And then come in again, always using the back of my scissors. I'm going to come in, I'm going to cut down to that point, and then I'm going to change. I'm going to come from the opposite side. I'm going to cut again down to that point and now I have not had to use the tips of my scissors and then I can simply come in and clean up. So again I'm going to come from right here, go down all the way to that lowest point, come from this direction, cut away some more material, and then I can go in and clean up. So that will hopefully avoid you ever cracking your plastic. So I'm going to go ahead and pause my video and I'm going to create my design. I will come back, I will show it to you, uh, we'll take a good look at it and I'll talk about what I expect to happen in the oven. Uh, again, you should expect your piece to shrink down to less than half of its size. So this piece, I'm going, this is a three inch piece. This is uh, probably closer to four, four and a half uh, inches. So this three inch piece, I would expect to probably shrink down to a little bit over an inch right there. Okay, and this piece, I would expect probably to shrink down to about that big. So this is going to be pretty small when I end up with it. Probably pretty close to the size of this item right here. So I'm going to get to work on my design. I'll come back and show it to you and we will go from there. All right, so here is my finished design. And again, I'm hoping that this is going to end up being uh, not as transparent because I don't want my pin back to show through. So I'm hoping it'll be a little bit more like this one uh, where my application of my colored pencils was really heavy so that it's not uh, clear, not as see-through versus this one where I tried to do a very light application to still make it somewhat transparent. So be sure that you're thinking about this when you create your design. Uh, you can actually do the markers in several layers. You can do the colored pencils in several layers. I would recommend against doing the markers in too many layers because it does tend to become kind of sticky on top of your design and it can very easily get smudged or it can run when you try to seal your design. Um, so here, I don't know if you can tell, my marker, I only went over it 
uh, once really and it does look like I could go over it again and I probably could and make it look uh, completely black. It looks a little bit gray right now, but I'm not going to because as the piece shrinks, those colors will intensify and it will look black when it comes out of the oven instead of looking a little bit more gray. So I will bake these two items separately. You can see here that I tried to get a little bit of color variation. Uh, be sure that when you're coloring that you color on a surface where you can actually see what you're doing. So for example here you can sort of see how the colors change from being on this table versus being on the piece of paper. So make sure that you can see what you're doing uh, as you're coloring and you can more accurately gauge how much pigment you're putting down. You can see here that I have some sort of visible um, marks on my on my piece. Those will not be as visible once I get done baking this piece. There you go, you can see them really well. But they might be a little bit visible. So if you want your piece to look just super, super smooth, also be careful when you're applying your pigment and be sure that you do a really good job of sanding before you start coloring. So again, you might even want to get that slightly higher grit sandpaper so you can get just a really smooth finish on your film before you start coloring. We will bake these things with the colored side up. And as I said, I'm going to bake once uh, the two pieces separately and then I'm going to fuse the two pieces together. If I wanted to punch a hole in this to turn it into a necklace, I would simply do that with a hole punch. So with a hole punch, you want to make sure not to punch too close to the edge. So if I were to punch like right there, remember that this is going to shrink to a little bit less than half of its size. And so that's going to be a very thin piece of plastic. So I want to be sure that I move my hole a fair bit in to the piece uh, before I punch so that I get a nice bit of plastic left and my my thread or whatever it is that I'm attaching doesn't just break my my hole and pull right out. Here you can see what I was talking about. I did some multiple layers of marker there. So that was the initial layer and then I overlapped right here just to show you how you can put down multiple layers of marker but usually it's not necessary in order to get the look that you really want. Okay, I'm going to preheat my oven to 330 degrees so if you are using a home oven uh, or even a toaster oven the temperature range that you're going to use is 300 to 350 degrees so I'm going to write that down so you will do it from 300 to 350 degrees and then it should only take about two to four minutes to finish cooking. And I would try to aim more for this four minute side or even five minutes. Um, you can leave these plastic pieces in the oven for a surprisingly long amount of time without anything super terrible happening. On your initial bake, you should not smell any plastic smell until you like maybe take it out of the oven and then you might smell a little bit. You shouldn't smell any plastic cooking um, from outside of the oven while your piece is inside of the oven. Um, but you can, at these lower temperatures, you can leave it in for maybe even up to five or six minutes and have nothing terrible happen. If your piece is really giving you trouble and you need to kind of uh, pull it out and and smash it down and flatten it out and then put it back in, you can do that. I wouldn't say that you should plan to double bake it or to put your piece back in the oven, but that is something that I did have to do with some of these larger pieces. I found that especially the centers of these large pieces, it took a really long time for the heat to penetrate and for these insides to completely um, shrink and to completely conform to their final shape. So what's going to happen is that your piece is going to shrink from the outside in. So the outside edges are going to start to shrink first and that's what causes that dramatic curling and then finally the center will shrink. So if you take your piece out of the oven and for example here if this piece didn't look mostly square, if it looked um, kind of distorted, 
it's probably not finished shrinking yet. And so you would want to put it back in the oven at that point, watch it for another two, three, four minutes, maybe even raise the heat a tiny bit. So I would actually start, I start my oven at about 330 degrees. Uh, and then if I need to, I either move it up to 350 degrees or I actually might turn on the convection to get that last tiny bit of shrinkage going. Um, if you're using a gas oven, you might even want to start down at 300 or 320. Uh, if you're using a toaster oven, I would also start at 300 because the toaster oven will really concentrate the heat. A lot of people do shrink their, their uh, projects in a toaster oven. Some people are going to have projects that are too big to fit in a toaster oven. But if you want, yeah, you can do it in a toaster oven. And you can even do it outside. If you have an outside outlet, um, you can do it outside in a toaster oven. Especially when you fuse pieces, um, you're going to create a lot of plastic fumes when you fuse. And so you don't necessarily want to do that in a place that's not very well ventilated. So when you fuse, which I will, I will repeat this warning, but when we move on to the fusing step, for fusing, we're going to be anywhere from about 425 to 450, and I do it at this 450, so this is for fusing. So you fuse at 450 usually, maybe 425 if you know your oven runs hot, if you're using a gas oven. Uh, so you're fusing at 450 degrees, and you're fusing for... 10 to 15 minutes. So you're fusing for 10 to 15 minutes. You will smell plastic when this is going on. Um, you're also going to be using a glass dish, whereas here you're going to be using a metal pan with parchment paper or a silicone baking mat. So there's a big difference between these two processes, and that's why with this process you can leave it in for a little bit while longer and nothing truly bad is going to happen. Here you're actually starting to melt the plastic, and so if you leave it in for a long time, it's going to just turn into a puddle. If you've punched any holes, those holes are going to disappear, they're going to close up. Um, and you can start to have some really bad things happen with this fusing process. Again, if you are a young person, get an adult to help you. Uh, even if you're an adult, it can be kind of handy to have a helper. Uh, so maybe one person to take the thing out of the oven and then another person to quickly use a spatula to flatten it out and make it conform to the shape that you want. Um, I will show you this process as best as I'm able. I am just one person, so I can't film and work at the same time, uh, but I will try to show you how I set up my pan for baking and how I, um, how, how the, the material behaves in the oven. So I will try to film how that material behaves in the oven so you'll know what to expect. So I'm going to go right now and I'm going to preheat my electric oven to 330 degrees and I will prep my uh, pieces for baking, for the first round of baking. All right, my oven just finished preheating, so I am almost ready to put my pieces in. So let me describe a little bit what I'm doing here. So for the initial bake, you will want to use a metal pan with either parchment paper or a silicone baking mat or baking sheet. If you're baking anything bigger than maybe this size, so for this one for example, what I would normally do if I wasn't filming this, I would take another piece of parchment paper I'd actually probably do it like this so I have room. I'd take another piece of parchment paper and then I would take some oven proof dishes and what would really be ideal for this is something small like ramkins but I don't have any ramkins but if you do feel free to use those uh, but make sure they are oven proof dishes because you don't want anything to shatter in your oven. Put those on either side so that they kind of loosely hold down the parchment paper and I would bake your items like this. Now the downside of this is you cannot see what's happening under this parchment paper once it's in the oven, uh, but you will know that after probably four minutes you should take, take your items out and check on them. And what this parchment paper will do is it will keep your pieces from curling on themselves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bake this one without the parchment paper and I'm going to film this so you can see what happens and then I will bake this piece separately uh, with the parchment paper. 
And this is also what you would do if you were to make a piece that has lots of little sticking out bits, like I said, like that hand outline maybe, or if you were making, you know, a unicorn or something that has uh, small delicate pieces that you've cut out, you would use this piece of parchment paper to hold down your piece so that it doesn't curl and stick to itself. There are ways to fix that. Um, the plastic is still pretty moldable when it is just out of the oven, so you can use um, something like a spatula or chopsticks to try to very gently uncurl it. Um, you will want anyway to have a spatula nearby. You will need this to flatten out your piece once it comes out of the oven. So the typical behavior of this shrink film is that it will curl and then it will flatten again as it catches up with itself. So as that interior bit, as the center bit catches up and shrinks, um, it will naturally flatten back out again. But it probably won't flatten out completely, so you'll want to use your spatula to completely flatten it. I also like to have a uh, completely flat bottomed uh, dish that I can just kind of set on top and allow the piece to cool with that piece setting, with that glass piece setting on top and that also um, can help to flatten out your piece. You will want these to be pretty flat because later we'll be fusing them together. If you're just doing a single bake and you're turning it into a pin or a necklace, it might not matter that it's just, you know, flat as a board. Um, a little bit of distortion might be okay. So that just depends on how much of a, um, how much uh, uh, accuracy you need and you know how flat your design is. Um, the last thing that I want to uh, point out is that um, when you are baking your pieces you want to make sure that they're not too close together they will move a little bit and they may actually even curl completely over and flip over um, that's not necessarily super great you do want your pieces facing up because the the marker especially will sort of liquefy a little bit in the oven and so if it's facing down um, it will actually come off onto your parchment paper but if it does happen um, you know, just pull it out, gently flip it back over, and then put it back in if it still needs some more baking time. But make sure that your pieces aren't too close together because they are going to do some acrobatics in the oven. All right, like I said, I'm just going to bake this one by itself. I will try to film it, and we will see what happens. Okay, so I just put my piece into the oven, and it is going to take a couple of minutes for anything to start happening. So this is on, you know, the middle rack of my oven. Again, you can do this in a toaster oven. You can use convection. I wouldn't use it right away. I kind of use convection as sort of a finishing method for getting that last little bit of shrinkage out of my piece if it hasn't shrunk completely. So you can start to see a little bit of curling. You should start to see some action after just a couple of minutes and then everything will start to happen pretty fast. So don't walk away from the oven. Watch it the entire time. And now we can see stuff really start to happen. So as I said, it's going to start from the edges. The shrinking is going to start from the edges. So you can see that it's curling in on itself. I'm not going to panic quite yet. And actually, I'm not going to panic at all. Panic doesn't help with this process. Um, but I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to worry too much at this point because I think it will flatten back out again once it starts to shrink from the middle. Once that middle part starts to shrink up, it should flatten back out again. But again, this is why you don't want to um, bake a piece that is real, real big without parchment paper on top because, and there it just flipped over, um, because that curling in on itself will be uh, kind of troublesome, pro kind of problematic with a larger piece. I'm going to go ahead and stop videotaping and I'm going to pull this one out. I'm going to flatten it out and then continue to bake it. Okay, so I pulled my piece out of the oven. I flipped it back over with my spatula and with the help of another spatula, I gently uncurled it and now I'm waiting for that middle portion to start shrinking and what should happen is that all by itself, that piece should start to flatten back out. And I may even turn on the convection here to help it out if it seems like 
uh, it's not working properly. You know, different ovens have different circulation patterns. So if you know that your oven bakes pretty well and pretty evenly, you probably won't need the help of the convection function. But I do see now, it's probably hard to see on camera, but I do see now that it is flattening back out. So I am getting that little last bit of shrinkage from the middle. So I will go ahead and stop my video for now. You can see, hopefully, that it really is starting to flatten back out on its own. So I'm going to stop my video. I will help this along the last little bit of the way by turning on the convection for probably just a few seconds to get that last little bit of shrinkage and then I will take it out of the oven. Okay, so here's my finished central dragonfly piece. And you can see that, again, this plastic is transparent so the design is visible from both sides. So here's the rough side, the side that I actually drew on and then here's the the smooth side. When I go to fuse, this side will be even smoother, but if I were stopping here, uh, I could seal it with an acrylic sealant or with Mod Podge, and I could put the pin back on it, uh, and then I can go ahead and use just this as a pin. But I'm gonna go ahead and make a back, so I can make a two-piece uh, piece of jewelry. And like I said, I'm going to use a piece of parchment paper on top to keep this one from curling quite so dramatically. I will videotape that and show you what it looks like and just how difficult it is to see what's happening. Um, you can see a little bit, so I think it's worth showing you what this looks like, um, but but that is my plan and, and we won't be able to see as much. So I'm going to put this to the side and I'll pop this in the oven once I've got it covered. Okay, so here's my piece under the parchment and as I mentioned before, you just can't see that much. Um, you might be able to see a little bit from the edge once it starts to shrink, but here you really are just going to basically have to set the timer. Um, because I have some darker designs on here, I can sort of see uh, where those corners are because I have those orange decorations in the corners. So I might be able to tell a little bit better on this one how much shrinkage I have uh, achieved. You don't want to pin the parchment paper down too tightly, so you're not trying to keep the piece totally flat, you're just trying to keep it really from curling uh, over onto itself. And I can see that there is some shrinkage starting, so you can see that the parchment is starting to distort a little bit, but I'm not going to be able to tell 100% uh, when it's totally done, so I probably will have to pop it into the oven uh, for a minute or two longer at the very end of this process. So I'm just trying to keep it from turning totally into a, a little roll like that other one did. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the video off and continue to monitor this one, and then I'll show you the results. All right, so here is my second piece out of the oven. Nice and stiff now. There's the shiny side, there's the dull side. So we are gonna move on to fusing. Now, if you have anybody in the house that is sensitive to fumes, to smells, you may not want to do fusing at all. You may just want to use super glue to glue pieces together and make compound pieces instead of actually melting them, fusing them together. Um, this will be stinky, it will smell like burning plastic, so make sure that you have a fan on, make sure that you have a window open, uh, the vent going, something to help uh, reduce those fumes. And if you are a young person, if you are not an adult, please have an adult help you, especially with this step. Now we have a choice here. We can either fuse with both sides, uh, both dull sides facing up, or with both shiny sides facing up. I don't know what will happen if you try to fuse dull side to dull side or shiny side to shiny side. I just know that uh, they say that you should only fuse with both shiny sides up or both dull sides up. So you'll have to make a choice of which one looks better and I think in this case I like the look of both shiny sides up. So that's what I will be, will be doing. I have a glass oven proof dish here so you'll be doing this in glass. The piece is actually going to stick itself to the glass, so when you pull it out of the oven, you will need to let it rest until it completely cools, and then it will naturally unstick itself from the, the glass dish. You may also want to go and pick up a dish from the uh, thrift store, from the flea market, um, something that you're not going to be using for food if you're going to be doing this a lot. 
Um, you don't want to use the same dish for your food that you necessarily use for uh, jewelry making and things like this. So all I will do is I will set this down in my dish. I will very carefully arrange my pieces. Now with this one, with fusing, again, you're melting the plastic. So you don't want to, you don't want to design something where it's like that, where your top piece is hanging over the edge of your bottom piece. Because what's going to happen is that's just going to drip down and it's going to lose its shape. Um, it's not going to, it's not going to stay this way. If you want to make something that's like this, that's an overlapped piece like that, you'll want to do that with just super gluing the pieces together. Fusing, that top piece has to be totally on top of the bottom piece so that it does not drip because it is going to be melting just slightly. The way that you'll know that your piece is done is that you'll see that the the surface is going to be very shiny so you'll be able to look in the oven and see that. You'll see that the edges instead of being sharp are getting kind of rounded and then you will know that it's ready to take out of the oven. So check on it at 10 minutes, see what's going on and then maximum would be 15 minutes in the oven at 425 to 450 degrees, probably more on the side of 450 degrees unless you know that your oven uh, runs really hot. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the oven and we will uh, check out our final results in the last video. Okay, here's my fused piece out of the oven. I probably actually left it in a hair too long, like maybe a minute too long. Um, I don't know if you can see that I think it's changed shape just slightly, uh, so I think it's it's melted just a little bit more than I had planned on. Uh, but I hope you can see, you know, the kind of changes that you're looking for, how the edges have become rounded, and the whole surface is shiny. Although because this was shiny side up and shiny side up, this whole piece was going to be pretty shiny to begin with. Uh, but if you were doing uh, dull side up and dull side up, so the side that you colored on, um, you probably would see a more dramatic difference in the surface texture changing. So I'm going to let this cool on the counter until it is it is totally cool, until it's not even warm anymore, and then this piece should pop off all by itself. So again, there it is a little bit closer up. Maybe you can see the kinds of changes that have occurred. All right, so here is my finished fused piece. You can see that it's very shiny on the top and those two pieces are clearly stuck together. You can see even on the back, it's gotten pretty shiny. So this is the side where the marker and the colored pencil is. Um, the orange is marker and then the rest is colored pencil. I probably will go ahead and seal this side. Again, you can seal with either an acrylic spray sealant. Be very careful when you're applying acrylic spray sealant because it can make your colors run if you put on too heavy a layer. So be sure and just put on very thin, very light layers, multiple layers or you can use Mod Podge to seal your work. So you should have Mod Podge already if you did the decoupage clipboard. In order to finish this off, once I've sealed it, I will sand it a little bit right here to make a rough spot. Make sure, oh, no, I'll sand it a little bit right here to make a rough spot. And then I will sand my pin back a little bit and simply glue that on to make uh, a brooch. Let me zoom in here a little bit more so you can see some details. So again, that is my fused piece that I made. I'm pretty pleased with how this turned out. It's not very transparent, which is exactly what I was going for because I didn't want this pin back to show through. I did lose a little bit of my um, my gradation in my green. I did have some yellow striping in there that you might have noticed or some lighter green striping and I did kind of lose that when the colors got concentrated. But overall I'm very happy with this design. You never know quite how something's going to turn out. You can make some educated guesses. Uh, but whatever you do, it will probably be just amazing and be an expression of your own creativity. I'm also really pleased with the way that the border turned out. This is my first time using those scissors, so I'm pretty pleased with that. So I hope this has given you a good foundation in using this shrink plastic or shrink film material. Again, lots of great ideas on the internet. This book will be available um, very soon when I get it turned back in. You can go ahead and place a hold in the catalog if you're interested in checking out this book. And happy crafting!